our video tutorial on box plots and R, and this should probably be part one. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University, but anybody's free to use it. Okay, so we're going to get started. We're going to read in the Cycler CPK data again for the same reason as before. It's easy. We've already downloaded it. We've been using it in videos as we've been going along, so this should be easy to keep on going with. All right, we run it. We've read it in. Uh, so to make a box plot is pretty easy, but we need to actually understand what we're doing as well. But for a box plot, we'll just do box plot. And we can put in here cycler one and then put in what we're interested in. And in this case, it's CPK one. I give it a run. And this is the picture I get, which is pretty unusable in the sense that we don't know what any of this means. We have a box and we have some numbers over here. So we need to doctor this up so it looks like a nice box plot. And then we'll we'll do that for the other ones as well. So the first thing we want to do is change the Y label. So the Y label is actually CPK. CPK measurement. The X label, well, this is time one. So let's just put here time one. And the main is CPK at time one. And then we might want to add some color to it as well because we've been adding color to our previous ones and I'm going to use, ooh, let's use sea green just to be different. We've been using the same boring colors all along. Let's mix it up a little bit and let's see what this does. All right, so this gives us a much nicer picture and it gives us a lot of information about the data. Uh, in terms of skewness and whatnot. Remember that a box plot is very different than a histogram because a box plot actually gives you the median. So this dark bar here is the median and that is the center of the data. So we, it's easy to read that out. Uh, we use the IQR, which is the difference between the first quartile and the third quartile. And you can clearly see these and just trace them back over and get a pretty good idea of what these numbers are. We also have what are called fences out here that are used to show how far out the data is spread. Now remember that inside the box, 50% of the data is, exists inside that box, and the rest of it exists outside the box. And that's what makes these things so useful, is because you can see various attributes about your data. The important thing is, is that you do want to comment about this data, okay? Uh, it's important to do that, otherwise you'll just get confused, and there's no point in making a picture that is kind of uh, this ugly uh, and boring if it doesn't tell you something. So let's be sure to put our comments here. We're still looking for center. How about we'll look, first look at the shape. And based off of what we see here, now we've seen uh, this before uh, in the stem and leaf plot and uh, in a histogram, and it does look different. But it, from here, it looks like it's skewed right. So it's skewed high. If we look at it here real quick, notice that this arm is longer than this arm. It's actually called a whisker. So this one's longer than this one, which means it's probably skewed out in that direction. Let's see, what can we get about the center? So we'll look at the picture here in just a second. Uh, for our center, we can zoom in here and see it's around 490, 500. So I'm gonna put here about 490 or to 500 is our guess on where that is. And then we get some information about the range or the spread of the data. And you can do this several ways. So I'm just going to look at it here. And I notice the data goes from just below 300 to just above 700. So I'll say this is probably, you know, 290 to 720. Uh, depending on, I mean, just looking at the picture. And unusual features, well, there aren't any here. 
because it doesn't allow you to see the resolution that would show that. But uh, there are no outliers. And that's the idea of using a box plot because it actually will show you the outliers. Uh, they will be dots outside the fences. And if they are dots outside of the fences, that is the actual definition of an outlier. Often people will say, oh, look, I have an extreme value, and that must be an outlier. And that's actually not the case. The extreme value can still sit inside the fences. So just be aware of that. Okay, so we can also take this and play around with it and see what else we can create. We can try to make this, take this exact same picture and make it horizontal. And I'm going to say make it true that it's horizontal. And I'm going to run this again, and it almost works. Say, so look, it's horizontal. Great. But that's actually not correct, because this down here is not time, and this over here is not CPK. So what you can do to doctor this up real quick is just relabel X and Y. It, you don't have to have Y label first or X label first. But when I run this, this becomes a much nicer uh, picture because time one is clearly indicated over here and you know that this is a CPK measurement. You can also see here how I would say that it's a little more skewed right than it was skewed left because it's easier to see things stretched out. All right, so this is the first crack at doing a box plot in R. We're going to move on to the next video. Where we'll try to put in even more uh, box plots together and see what they can tell us. All right, see you later.